Okay, so this is activity 5.2 uh, A1, geometric constraints. Um, I've navigated in Angel. I went to our course, the lessons tab, and I'm inside the third quarter assignment folder. And inside here, there's only one assignment so far. I'm going to select it. I'm going to select this link to get to the file. Here's the actual file, and I want to download it, so I right-click and I say save link as and now I'm gonna go ahead and keep the name the same but I'm gonna put an underscore my last name and I will save it and I've, I've already done it um, so you can see it's up here as well but I need to use my browser as I'm naming it here I also need to make sure I know where the, f the file is going to uh, land inside what folder so I went to my documents and I had gone to my inventor files and this is an inventor training file and right there I'll hit cancel because I've already done it in the previous video okay so now I want to open that file um, you can open it from inventor so if you go to inventor and choose open I can choose this drop down here and I can navigate through uh, so under my name, my login, I'd want to go to the documents folder. Here's my documents. And then I want to go to my inventor files, and then inventor training files, and there's the file. And let's go ahead and open that up. This message here about an active project, you can just ignore that. So would you like to continue opening it? Yes, we would. Okay, now I'm back. The video of uh, the... Okay, now I'm back. The document loaded. And I've got it in front of you. And this is a... You can see the extension down here, IDW. It's an inventor drawing file. Um, and so it's not a, a, a part file like you might have thought. Um, but we can work in here... Um, and get to the sketch to edit and to play around with things. You can zoom and move around just like you would in a part file. So I can use my wheel to zoom out or zoom in. Okay. But to actually make changes and to play around with the geometric constraints and to have those appear in the ribbon, I need to come over to Sketch and I'm going to right click on it. Not a left click. I, I hovered, I right clicked, and I go to Edit. Once I'm on edit, I bring up my, it brought up my sketch ribbon, like I'm accustomed to when I'm working in a part file. And so we're going to go through and just take each of these sections just one at a time and get familiar with our constraint section. Right here are the geometric constraints. Um, like so many things in Inventor, if you just hover your mouse over the square and pause, you'll get a little box that pops up telling you what that button does it gives you you know the name of it and a brief description of how it works okay so let's just go through these make perpendicular perpendicular means that these two lines or segments will form a 90 degree angle and the symbol for perpendicular is kind of an upside down T in geometry here they've got it angled but it's right here and if I hover over you can see perpendicular causes selected linear geometry to lie at right angles to one another I'm going to go ahead and select that tool, okay, and now it asks me down below, you can see select first line or ellipse axis. Now the axis to an ellipse is a line segment. Basically they're asking for a line. You know, is there a segment here in the document that I'm going to want to make perpendicular or something? So I'll select this one. Now it says select a second line or another axis okay so I'm going to choose this one and upon the second click these two snap together now because the perpendicular geometric constraint tool is still highlighted it's still connected so I could move on to two other segments and I have to select it's starting all over select one and then two you can see it's back to select the first and I can make two other segments perpendicular if I'd like if I'm done I right click and say OK. And that's done. If we'd like our constraints that we just applied to show up, 
you should be able to right click here and say show all constraints or the keyboard uh, stroke would be to hit the F8. Okay, and you see that we've got this little perpendicular tool now, or, or symbol, letting us know that these were indeed perpendicular. Okay, the next one says make all three lines parallel to one another. Okay, right next to the perpendicular tool, these two lines that are side by side and going in the same direction is your parallel constraint. This tool causes selected geometry to lie parallel to each other. I'm going to select it. And again, down in the lower left corner, it tells me, Inventor's telling me what I should be selecting. It's select your first line. So I'm going to choose that one. And now it says select a second line. I'm going to choose that one. And notice it went back to saying select a first line again. Once you've chosen a second line, those two should snap to be in parallel. But then you can start all over. I wanted all three. I can't just select the third line in Inventor and have Inventor assume that I wanted this to be parallel to these two. I'm going to have to choose one of these again. So I want this line and this line to be parallel. There you go. When I'm done with my parallel tool, right click and say OK. Now, I can still move these lines around, but I can't change their angle. If I, well, I can change one of them, but all the others are going to have to follow. I can't change the angle where they won't all be in a straight line. Okay, I'm going to click on my wheel and pan over a little bit. Okay, beginning to look at the next one. Uh, here it's a little confusing in the document how they labeled, they made these points um, that are labeled a 1, 2, and 3 that are floating uh, as a way to number the circles, but they will not move if you adjust and move the circles. So just be keep that in mind. If I move the circle, that 1 is not going to follow it. And so we might want to, um, actually let's try to apply a coincident constraint from that dot to that dot so that we can get the 1 to stay there. And we'll do a coincident constraint from the center of this circle and the point that's labeled 3, and a coincident constraint the center to 2. I'm going to right click and say OK as I want to turn off the coincident constraint. And there you go. Now um, that should help. And we get those numbers to stay with our circles. OK. So dimension 3, um, circle number 3, to have a 2 inch diameter. So let's choose the dimension tool, left click up here, it's highlighted. Choose the circle number three, pull away, and I'm going to left click once, and it just made it. This was already made in the sketch, um, and so it was already uh, given a dimension. We want to edit it. Um, this time I was really just making it appear. So right click and say OK to turn the dimension tool off. OK, so we're not going to go and dimension other features right now. But to edit a dimension, a dimension, we turn the dimension tool off, then we can left double click on it, and we can edit it here. We get the little dialog box. So I'm going to make it 2.0 inches. Hit Enter, and there we go. OK, now I'm going to drag the center, grab the center of circle 2, and pull it away to move circle 2 outside and move circle 1. Um, it says fix circles 1 and 2. I did that, and uh, I guess I'll, I'll call that for putting those points there. Um, so they stay with our circles. It says make circle 3 tangent to circles 1 and 2. Okay. Uh, the tangent tool is this tool right here. It shows a line touching a circle at one point, but you can also make two curves or two tangent uh, circles tangent to each other. So I'm going to choose the tangent tool. Down in the lower left it says select the first curve, so it's going to be circle 3. Select another curve, it'll be circle 1. And I'm still on the tangent tool and it's reset to select a first curve all over again. So I also want circle 2 to be tangent to circle 3. So I'm going to choose circle 2. Circle 3 will be my second curve. And it went ahead and moved circle 2 for me so that they could be tangent. Right click, I'm done with the tangent tool and say OK. Move that dimension out of my way there a little bit. OK, moving on. Make a circle tangent to both lines. So again, practicing the tangent tool. Grab the tangent, we're going to make the curve tangent to a line. 
but we'd also like the circle to be tangent to this line. So I'm starting over. The tangent tool is already selected. Choose the circle, choose the second line, right click and say OK. And there you go. Let's pan down. This says fix point C. We'd like to affix it to the center. I'm going to use a coincident constraint. It's not really a geometric constraint as much as just saying I want it to be more of a coincidence that this C, point C and that point, the center, happen to be the same point. I choose those two geometries. The coincident constraint is still turned on. I'm going to right click and say OK to turn it off. OK. It says make endpoints A and B coincident with point C. Well, we need to fix points A and B as well, don't we? So choose coincident constraint, and let's make A be the endpoint, and let's make B be the endpoint over here. Again, turn off that. Okay, so make these endpoints coincident with point C. So the coincident constraint tool, I'll choose B and C. They will now be the same point. And now let's start over, choose the first point again, A, and B and C. Right click and say OK. OK. And all three points are in there as you can see, but they're right on top of each other. So um, I can, should be able to drag this and make it longer. But you can see that we've got, let me fix my zooming here, we've got the two lines. Um, the center of the circle, C is there, and the endpoints A and B are coincident. Okay? Making circles concentric. Concentric circles are circles that have the same center. One way to do that would be to use our coincident constraint and to make all the, circle, uh, the centers constrained to being the same point. But you also have a concentric tool right here. You can choose that, and instead of having to select the centers, you can just choose the circle. So I'll choose my first circle, the largest one, and I'll choose the medium one. They snap automatically to share a center. The tool is still on, and I'm ready to begin or repeat the process again if I'd like, which I would. I'm going to choose the littlest circle, and either the medium or the large, and it will snap to become concentric with those two. I'm done with that tool, so I right click and say OK. If I want my constraint icons to appear to illustrate all of these constraints I'm creating, you can press the F8 key. Okay, These uh, constraint tools often come in pairs, so if you're wondering why there's four of these, it's because I made two circles have that constraint, and then I chose two other circles for the second time. So these two icons are appearing next to the circles that were selected. Pan over. Make lines collinear. Collinear means to, uh, to fall on the same line. Now in geometry, a line is something that extends forever. So two lines can be collinear without, um, or these are segments, can be collinear without actually um, touching. They don't have to lie right on top of each other. They simply have to. Uh, be in the same line if you were to extend a line forever, infinitely, in these directions that these two would fall in that same path. Okay, I'm going to separate them right now so that we can see them snap together. And let's look up in the constraint tools. Okay, this one right here, where there are two segments that appear to be in the same path, that is the collinear constraint. I will choose that. It says select first line or axis. I'm going to choose this one. Now choose a second line. I'm going to choose this one. I'm done with that tool. I right click and say OK. And they are now collinear. OK? They're not stuck together. They're two different segments, but they're going to be collinear. They're going to fall on the same linear path. OK? Again, you can hit F8 to make the icons appear. OK? I'm going to pan over. Make lines horizontal. All right, you have horizontal and vertical tools in your geometric constraints. Up above, there's a horizontal tool. Okay, it's a horizontal line. There's also a vertical tool. I'm going to make 
this one horizontal. I can make the second one horizontal using the same tool. Can you think of another way to do it? Another way to do it would be to make these two lines parallel. Right? If this one's horizontal and it's constrained to always being horizontal, <clears throat> yet the second one has to be parallel to it, won't it also then become horizontal? Looks like that worked. Okay. Let's move on to the next one. Make lines vertical. Okay, just like the last one, I'm going to use the vertical tool this time. And I'm going to pick a line and make it vertical. I can repeat that process, the tool is still on, and make the other ones vertical. But I can also choose the parallel constraint tool. And any other lines that I want to be vertical, I could constrain a non-vertical line to being parallel to a vertical line. Hit F8 to turn your icons on to show where you made constraints. And there you go. I can see my vertical constraint here, my vertical constraint here, and then my parallel constraint. And that's funny. I didn't make that constraint to be um, parallel. I don't know how that happened. Uh, I can right-click on that and delete that constraint. Let's, I have no idea. All right, let's come on over. Unless that was already in the document somehow, there was uh, an applied constraint to those two segments being uh, parallel. <clears throat> okay, make an equilateral triangle. An equilateral triangle is a triangle with all equal sides. In the geometric constraint section, you have what looks like an equal sign. Okay, and this is going to make two um, selections equal. So it says select the first line, circle, or arc to make equal. So we just want to choose the segment. Now choose a second line. I'll choose this one. All of a sudden I have a triangle that is isosceles. It has two equal sides. I'm going to turn that tool off, say OK. I'm going to resize this a little bit. Move one of those points so that those two equal sides get smaller. Let's see. Uh, I can select the whole triangle if I click, hold, and drag uh, going in a down right direction. I can create this window where everything that's inside it, fully inside it, will get selected, and then I can move the whole object. Okay. If you ever uh, click, hold, and drag in an up left direction, notice the box is green instead of red. The difference here is that everything that touches this box will be selected, where with the red direction, only things that are fully contained inside the square will get selected. Like that circle won't get selected because it's not fully inside. Had I gone this way and just skimmed the circle because it's touching, you can see it's now green. It's been selected. OK. Um, so lastly, this is isosceles currently. Let's make it equilateral. Let's make one of the two isosceles legs be constrained to being equal to the base. Now that these two are equal, all three should be equal. Right click and say OK. Hit the F8 key on your keyboard again. And this almost looks like at a quick glance it goes, oh, they're parallel. Well, obviously they're not parallel, they intersect. And with parallel, the two lines are not horizontal, they're angled. So while this looks like it's parallel when they're horizontal, that is saying equal, and parallel is slanted. All right, almost done. Make these two circles the same size. Choose the equal tool again, and simply choose the first circle and the second circle. Right click and say OK to turn that off. The last one says to line up the centers of the circles on the same horizontal plane. Um, with this one, we can use the horizontal tool. And it says select line, axis, or first point. 
and so you can use the horizontal line to align two points to be horizontal to each other. So we are going to align the center, this point, and we're going to say we want that point to be horizontal to this point, and then they'll fall on the same horizontal line. Um, making that second selection, it resets the tool. The tool is still on, but I'm ready to begin the process all over again. Select line, axis, or first point. So I'll choose this point to be horizontal to this point. And now all three have snapped together. Right click and say OK to turn that tool off. When you're done with all of these, let's make sure we've pressed F8 one last time. So I'm going to hit F8. OK, so all those are going to appear. Then I'm going to come up to the text tool, choose that, and I'm going to come down to this bottom right corner where I've got all the space. I'm going to click and drag and hold and make a big box where I'm going to be able to type my name. Okay, and the size, I want it to be quite a bit bigger, so let's go ahead and make it like, uh, how about 0.75? Let's see what that looks like. Yep. Yep. Text tool still on. I need to turn that off to edit that text that I just created. Um, I didn't highlight the text. So I need to uh, have it highlighted down here in the box before I can change the size. There you go, that's pretty good. Now I can move it as well. You want your name down here nice and big where it's very easy to see. And I'd like you to uh, finish the sketch. No, actually, finishing the sketch doesn't show the constraint anymore. So let's turn that back on, edit the sketch. I'm going to pan and get that so it is zoomed where the whole thing fits in your window. And now take a snip of it. So on your taskbar, if you don't have the snipping tool like I do, just go to your start button and search for snip and you'll find it. Okay, like this. Select that tool. It automatically opens with it ready to grab. I can You can move this out of your way a little bit, but I'm going to click, hold, and drag to frame out this document. And basically, I'm just going to take a picture of it with all the constraint icons showing and my name showing. I select it, and then I'm going to not copy it, but save it. And I'm going to save this in the same place that we had the, the inventor file in my documents my inventor files, my inventor training files. So this is 5.2 and you can see all that show up. I can use the same name but it's not an inventor drawing file. I want to take that extension off and I'll change that with um, how about The snip and you can see that it's a type a drawing type so I'm gonna hit save and now if I go in here to my documents my inventor files inventor training files okay you'll see this PNG is a is a picture file type so I have now a picture that I can open up and that opens up with just Windows Photo Viewer. Okay, This document, this picture, is what you're going to turn in as evidence of having done this. Okay, To turn that in, I'm kind of get rid of these windows. Okay, To turn that in, you're going to go back to Angel. Uh, let me just go back to the third quarter assignment. Here's the assignment. Okay, and if you scroll down, this is where we got the file where we could download it, but down below is where you can attach and turn it in. So, um, 5.2.a1, activity 1. Um, I want to attach something, so attach. Choose file. I want not the inventor file. Please make sure you don't get the inventor file. I want just the picture, the snip you took. So choose that. Say open. It shows it. I want to upload it. Okay, finished. And now it shows the document that I uploaded. It's the snip. And then you can submit it, and that is turning it in.
Now you turn it here in Angel simply is going to allow me to have access to go and grade it later as if you put the paper in the turn in tray. Um, it's not automatically going to show up in progress book or anything. There's no connection. I have to manually later when I have time go in and see who did it and look at it and, and grade it and get it turned into progress book myself. Okay, after you submit it, you're done. Good job.